Hey guys, we're going to be doing a fun little house portrait. I am super excited. We are using the DaVinci I AR app and I'll give you a quick rundown of how to use it and then we're going to jump right in to drawing a sweet little house portrait. Just stick around. <laughs> oh no, wrong one. <laughs> I need to find which, which, uh, um, hello guys, how you doing? I'm really excited and I just realized that I'm looking at the wrong, uh, setup. I thought I had it all set up. I think it's under the, is it under the wide view? No. I'm going to have to click through all of my views to get me to the right one. There it is. <laughs> Crazy! I've been moving cameras around and I forgot which view I was supposed to be in. Welcome, guys. Tatiana and Gina and Lori Ann and Chris, uh, excuse me, Shauna. <laughs> I'm just reading down the list. Oh, Walina. Oh, wow. Guys, thank you so much for being here. If you are interested in the DaVinci I app, there's a link down below in the more information box for the. I'm looking at the wrong camera. I moved my camera. I have a link down in the information box for um, both the Apple Store and the Google Play Store. They are affiliate links. So if you happen to make a purchase of the app through one of those links, I actually make a little commission. So it's a way to help support me. And thank you. All right. So, hey, Linda and Kathy. Hey, yay. It's hail, hail. The gang's all here. <laughs> Come on in, settle in. We are going to be using the DaVinci Eye app and I am going to continue to look at this wrong camera. I have a, this little camera right, right here. This one used to be my side view camera. I've got it mounted above me. Then I have the other above me camera aimed at the phone and a face camera over on top of the monitor. <laughs> Woohoo! I'm really cooking with steam today, aren't I? All right. So what we are going to do is I have the DaVinci Eye app here. I'm going to make this screen bigger for a moment. You're just not going to see me. Oh, disregard the bag of lentils. That's actually here to hold my, um, to keep my goose, gooseneck here a little bit more steady while I'm drawing. <laughs> Hey, Kathy. All right, because I know a lot of people have been wondering about this app. So this is the DaVinci I, and this is the, the, the little icon for it right there. So I'm going to click on the icon. I've already downloaded it. I've already been playing with it. I am going to go straight into Draw Now. And it wants you to pick your image first before you choose which way you're going to draw it. So I'm going to pick this little house right here and you have option of classic mode or AR mode. I'm going to use AR mode because I want to be able to, this piece of paper, I want to be able to move it around as I am drawing. So I'm going to select AR mode and because I already have a, an anchor picture, in here I will just say lock the focus and then let's see I might have to I might have to, to move this around just a little bit more see because I moved things I want to see most of my piece of paper all right so now I'm in here but my pictures whoops in the wrong place for you that's why it's over there got it my picture's in the wrong place here. I'm going to pick this up and kind of move it around. There. Look at that. My picture is already locked to my paper, but I need it to be put in the right place. So I'm going to just say move. It's already on picture. I'm going to pick the picture up and look at that. I can move the picture around on my paper and I can resize it. Two fingers to resize. And then take it out of move. When you do that, then you can resize your whole screen. But now, if I rotate my piece of paper, the picture rotates with it. But look at that. I rotated it too far off the screen. The camera can't see my little anchor. So I have to remember that. But that makes it really nice because it locks it onto your paper. So you're not 
it doesn't lose like when you're picking up another sheet of paper when you're doing a tracing yeah you can resize you can resize the actual picture so i can let's see here i'm gonna shift that a little bit so i can move the whole piece over i'm gonna put it back on move i'm gonna sort of line this up so you can see both edges of my both edges of my paper so you can see both edges here and that's the top and there's the bottom so we can see the whole sheet of paper in that screen all right this is an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper and I'm on move it's on picture so I can pick it up and I can move it around on my paper I can resize it I could get it as big as this piece of paper I could actually get it bigger than this piece of paper but I don't want to <laughs> But I don't want to. I want to keep it kind of small. We don't want to be here forever. And that's why I chose this little house. Because it would be a simpler house to do. If you keep your anchor. See my anchor is a, this little card right here. You just follow the instructions to do the anchor. Um, I'll give you a. I'll show you really quick under the tools. Where to set your anchor in case you are. In case you're. What do I want to say? In case you're new and you haven't seen it, I'll show you how to make an anchor because I had a panic moment and it was saying it couldn't find my anchors. So I was like, oh my gosh, it's not letting me make a new anchor. What am, what's going on? And it was really sil silly and easy once you know where you're supposed to go. But that's where I want it on the paper. So if I were to do everything clear out, let's see. Actually, I want to, whoops, I want to shift this over on my piece of paper a little bit. I don't need quite so much room on that other side. There we go. All right. So now I can resize it so I can see bigger, but I can't rotate it on here, right? I can only rotate it by rotating my paper, but I can make it bigger. I could go really tight in if I want to see that window so that I'll be able to go in and draw it. Now look at that. You can see a shadow of my of my pencil. I'm going to drop the opacity down just a little bit. Now we can see the tip of my pencil a little bit better. It helps it so that you can see where you're lining up. And because I have multiple things going on here, I am actually, let's see here, pull that back just a little bit for you. I want to make sure that this stays in line. Oops. I zoomed in too much. There it is. I kind of zoomed there. I just wanted to make sure that this whole, my whole screen right here stays up for you. And you're also going to be able to see the full drawing going on down here. Ha ha ha. I think, oh, I, I can, I can fix that. Look at that. I can just move that over. Mm, so nice. Thank you guys so much. I am so excited that you're here. You bought a cell phone holder. That's not any good. Let you know. Uh, so in my more information box, the cell phone holder that I'm using, I've had it since 2018. It's still available for sale. The reviews are you know it's over a four point it's like 4.2 or 4.3 on amazon um but i've not had any problem with it the uh clip is nice and strong the actual let's see here i'm gonna bring this over so i've got it it's a screw clamp so it screws on here i have it on a tripod arm or tripod stand then I've got this bag of lentils that's just holding it to keep it a little bit more sturdy. Comes up. It's got, it does not have the, uh, the chip clamp. This one has a sideways, sideways clamp on it. So it is on both sides. And it's a compression clamp. Spring loaded. So I hope that helps. Uh, it's linked. It's listed down below in the more information box with 
all of my art supplies. So if you're interested in that, I am really glad that that helps. You're, you're, Darcy, what do you love? Do you love these videos or do you love those lentils? <laughs> Just saying. Don't know. Now that I picked it up and moved it, because it's just balancing on. Is it going to stay? Maybe? There. Okay. A bag of lentils and some duct tape. Hey, you know what? That will fix everything in the world, won't it? All right. So. Anyway, if you want to make a um, an anchor and you don't know... Uh, you know, for some reason it's lost your anchors, you click tools and you click AR and then it will allow you to create a new anchor. Um, I'm not going to create a new anchor, but what you do is you just click make anchor. You take a picture, you crop it, you tell it what the size is that you want. Okay. I'll, I'll do it. I'll do it. Let's see. I just, I need just a little something and it doesn't have to be anything it doesn't have to be anything like super, oh, that, that won't work. It has to have at least an inch and a half. That's too small. Um, no, not that. There. So if I was to make an anchor with something like this, I think that that's an inch and a half. All right. You just need something that you can take a picture of. So I'm going to click on make anchor, take a picture. I'm going to just take the photo, use that photo, crop the image. And when you crop the image, it's going to, it's just going to crop it to, you know, ah, my fingers. I have tiny little fingers, but you know, Get back there, you. But sometimes things are a little bit... All right, say done. I'm going to say that it's um, one and a half inches high because it's about that. And then it says that it fills in the other, uh, other size is 2.3. And then... I'll say done and it's going to say that because it's out of focus, I'd have to go off of focus lock. See now it would be, it would be locked to that, but I don't want to use that one. So it's going to jump back to one of my other, one of my other anchors. All right, and I'm going to go off of the AR mode by just clicking on tools. Now I'm back to my paper and I want to move that back up a little bit. See how you can, I mean, you can resize things. You can make it, make it work how you want it to work. All right. Uh oh, my chat disconnected. Okay, stop this. I don't know what happened, guys. Um, hopefully this is still going through. Let me know. People, please tell me if you see me. Because I'm getting a playback error. I'm, I might have to refresh my browser. Okay, guys, I'm going to have to refresh my browser because it gave me a playback error. I'm going to have to go out and come back in. <laughs> okay, so I had a playback error. 
So I had a playback error and that was causing me some consternation because it was saying that I wasn't sending out a signal. Weird. Yay, I'm so glad. Okay, we're going to get back to uh, doing the actual artwork here and it's going to be really delayed on my side. So hopefully you guys are going to be fine. All right, we're going to get in here and start drawing because I want to get get this get this going. So I'm looking at this and going, I need to shift a little bit and I need to size it up so I can see a little bit bigger so you guys are I'm kind of I'm short maybe I should raise my chair up should I raise my chair up maybe let's see oh it's as high as it goes okay fine guess what I need a taller chair Sorry about that, guys. I, where's my, where's the lever? There it is. Oh, the, wow, that's better. Now I've got my tractor seat chair. Gets me up high. <laughs> oh, oh, that's so much better. Guys, make sure and get yourself to the angle that you need to be so that you can see and work at a comfortable angle. All right. Oh, that makes me feel better. Oh, and I am using a, this is a Statler Mars Technio pencil. It has these, um, these long leads like this with a point on it. This is an HB. So, And I have this little pencil sharpener. This is a Coom pencil sharpener. And it is made for doing the um, standard pencils. And you can also sharpen your uh, solid lead pencils. It's really cool. Um, and this is the Coom Automatic Long Point. So you can do, um, you sharpen it in one and then you go to number two. And then this one is one and then two. Anyhow, let's draw. Let's get this, let's get this going. Little house portraits. People actually pay good money for house portraits, guys. Now, one of the things I want you to notice is that I'm not worried about drawing straight across things. Ooh, you're not going to see that very well, are you? Eh, I was working so hard at that. Let's see. We're going to end up with some funky crosshairs in the middle of the screen. There we go. That'll go away in a minute. I have noticed that because I've been doing a lot of drawing with my iPad and Procreate. I need to make that bigger so I can see it better. Because I've been using my iPad and Procreate, I have been getting a little bit sloppy with my straight lines. Because Procreate, you can get that lovely snap line. And on here, I did a practice draw of a different drawing of a different house because I'm going to just lay another piece of paper over this and trace it off with a pen so it doesn't matter if it's a little bit messy when you do your pencil drawing do it on a heavier piece of paper then take some um, tracing paper or um, some vellum tra uh, artist vellum lay it down over the top and draw it with your pen then you've got both um, your pencil sketch that you got off of the photograph and then you have your clean ink drawing So right now I am just going to go, go around and just start tracing lines. This is really cool because it gives you the opportunity to learn how this house is put together, right? Let's see. And this is going to be me working here in the studio, just drawing this little house. 
So hopefully that's what you are here for. Hang out. Enjoy the, the camaraderie in the chat room. Ask questions if you have any. I am happy to answer. If I don't see your question, please make sure that you put it all in caps. I do seem to catch those a little bit better. I like the wobbly lines. I like the hand-drawn quality that you get with this, even though I am, you know, quote-unquote, tracing this house. I'm learning how the house is built. And because I'm doing it with pencil, I don't mind if my lines uh, cross over. Like right up here, my point is going above that little, uh, the roof line right there. I'm not, I'm not too worried about that because I'm going to be able to fix that. This has this really cute little scallop. Like that. And there's a bit of an opening in it. Now, I'm not necessarily drawing that opening exactly right. But it's enough to... See, I'm getting lost up there because there's leaves. But this has got this cute little gingerbread on it. Like that. Came down a little bit farther, maybe. No, it didn't. Went like this, down, across. Um, some of this I'm having to kind of figure out because I am lost in the leaves right there. No, if you zoom in, look, zooming in does not affect the placement. So I'm going to go right here and draw that, whoops, draw that little bit of a, that roof line bit there. And I'm going to skip past the tree See, it goes up to the tree right here. I'm going to skip past the tree. And skip past the tree. Okay, and then that's at the end of the house there. I'm going to come up here and come down. And, oh, look, I ended up against the tree. I think I'm going to put that tree in. If you were ever worried about trees, this is an awesome way to get them in. It helps you to see how the, what the structure of a tree is like. So I kind of ran into that branch right there, went off. There's a little gap right here. And then there's a line because this is coming like that. So do you guys like the uh, having the picture view that I see and the picture view of the of the down? So seeing that this one up here, this is what I'm looking at. I'm not even looking at my paper. So, you know, whatever is going on down here is just going on. I'm watching. I'm watching this screen up here. And now, I don't have to draw that whole tree. I can let it just sort of float away into the, just off the edge of the paper or just off the edge of where I'm drawing. I'm not too worried about making things perfect. I am not going to draw every single leaf. I will put little indications of leaves bump but bump 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 and then down the down the trunk and then I'm going to come down here and go all right so that's down at the ground level I like the little picket fence I don't know why I chose a picket fence for a video when I'm going to be doing this with people watching 
because I tend to get bored with picket fences. But, you know, here, I'm going to draw just up and down, across, up, up, down, up, up, down, up, up, over, down, up. All right, so then I need to come back and get more of this area underneath of that so I can get the those little boxes in the middles. See how easy this is, though. I mean, a good, clean, high-contrast picture of whatever you are drawing is probably the key to any kind of really good tracing. And if you have um, outline drawings that you want to transfer onto canvas or onto watercolor paper, this works awesome for taking and just tracing off your, your reference pictures. See how that went? That's, that's actually not not as not as awful as I was expecting it to be and then go like that put my little grassy bits in underneath here going up to the tree so now it looks like I've got that all drawn in let's see I will just stretch to zoom we can get that a little bit bigger there you go Okay, so let's see here. Going up the side of... See how I'm zoomed in, but I can just drop right onto any area. <laughs> I want to try and move it here, though. <laughs> I'm looking up, up, up. There's a bit of that edging. There, that's a little bit better. Misses the edge of the tree. There's a little bit of siding being seen right there. I'm not worried about the um, this stuff that's in the background over there. It's just going to have tree branches. So maybe I'll come back up here. I got distracted off of branches, didn't I? I'm going to say there is a branch going there. And then that comes up, and there's sort of a knot right here, like there had been a branch. That's all knots are. Knots are just where there were branches at some point, and that they came off. See, and the tree just just keeps going so you know you can kind of decide where the tree stops you get to decide on your details you know so maybe i'm i'm going to say that one the branch kind of broke off and this one's going to go a branch that way and See, I don't have the top of that. I'm just making it up. You know, cool thing about trees. Nobody's going to tell you, oh, that tree's wrong <laughs> because you didn't get that branch in the right place. Trees are natural things. They have their own growth pattern. And if you draw wider than the tree, no big deal. I'm just putting a few little scraggly branches here that leaves might be hanging out on. Maybe not as so I don't want to go too far over until I get this window drawn in. I'll get it drawn in. Now I am going to be tracing this picture off 
with ink on another piece. Actually, I'm probably going to trace this picture off by taking it into Procreate and tracing it again in Procreate, not during this show. Just so that I have my black lines and it's already in as a digital picture. Oops. Drawing in pencil though, I will be able to clean up some of these overshot lines. Um, you don't, if you are going slow and paying attention, you can actually get very, very precise, very, very precise outlines. There, that's better. But this is doing pretty well. That's doing pretty well. I say, why not go ahead and get this little roof in? And now what I'm drawing right there, this is actually the capping of the shingles over the edge of that roof. And I'm just going a little bit crazy. I need to turn the paper. Whoops. I need to turn it this way. There we go. I needed to get a better angle on it. But this is the little roof over the front door. So did that, did that. We'll draw the little front door on. You know, certain things will be way easier than others. <laughs> But you don't really have a problem with perspective on this one. You can, you can certainly adjust the contrast so that you can see all of your lines more easily. This is a little, a little house that I found on Unsplash. So if you're looking for references, things to draw, that's a good place to go. I do have a video on find, finding references and making collections on Unsplash. So I need to adjust the opacity just a little bit here so that I can see, you can't really see it very well, but on the inside of that door, you can kind of see, that has these long skinny windows on the inside of the door. That's what zooming in like this really helps. Okay, question. Can you adjust the size by the closeness of the camera or just the picture? You can adjust the size. Um, the farther your camera is from your paper, the bigger you can draw. But you can draw smaller by just you know, having the camera much closer to the paper, you get to a point though, where you can't get your hand underneath of the camera. So at that point, you're too close and you need to raise your camera up away. Um, one of the things that they suggest, um, Sam suggests on uh, the DaVinci Eye app is using like a, a tall drinking glass with a couple rubber bands on the, just cut rubber bands over the top of the glass. So you would have your glass and you would lay a couple rubber bands over it and then you could set your phone down. So it would be whatever the height your glass is. If you, if you, um, you can put it up on top of a pitcher or a vase and that would get it up higher and away from your paper more. That's a good thing too. Uh, it gives you room for your hand to be out of the way, but, um, I like having my phone attached to something so that when I'm touching it and resizing, it's not going to, it's not going to fall over and I'm not going to have to try and line things back up. How's that? You've been making collections. Yeah. Collections are so cool. All right. I want to get a bit more of a point on here. So I'm just extending my, extending my graphite into the 
into the pencil sharpener. Now that's giving me my blunt end. And then I move it around here and that's going to give me my sharp tip. See, now I've got a super, super sharp tip. That could actually poke you if you're not careful. There we go. You've been wanting to draw your childhood home for a mixed mixed media piece, Tara? Yeah, this is awesome. You missed the beginning setup. Um, just at the end, just roll it back and you can you can watch the whole thing. So here I'm going to go like this and get that tall window in there and get that tall window in there. Now this does have like little molding around it. I'm going to go ahead and draw that little outline on there and the wobbly lines had character. So embrace the wobbly lines, guys. If you don't want wobbly lines, after you've you've done it like this and you know how the house goes together, you can then go in and see I'm gonna make that little bit of the fence right there, I think. See I I can jump around, I can go do different parts. I just wanted to get that bit of the fence in so that way while I'm working on the door I know where I'm going and where I'm stopping. See right there I sort of wobbled. I would rather or I would I would be doing the um, straightening up in in Procreate and that's what I was going to say is that if you have another app that you want to take it into you take a photo or scan the artwork, but if you don't have that opportunity, you don't have that, that way to do it, you, like I said before, put a piece of tracing paper over the top of this and just go to, go to town. Let's get the inside bit on that. But this is definitely the way to get an actual likeness. You can do a likeness of people with this app also. You can do, you know, many of us are not as confident with our people skills. And to be able to get the, you know, the basic likeness of someone and then, you know, have, have the eyes in the right place, have the nose the right size. Uh, the ears level, those kinds of things. Um, get the mole on their on their cheek in the right place. Uh, things that cause you to know that that's that person. And then you can take it off of that and you can go and do all of your painting and contours or uh, form, texture, all of those things without the tracing app. All it does is give you a little bit of a leg up, give you a little bit more confidence in the basic layout of something. So, you know, just let's see, where am I? And I'm tracing white pickets in front of a white house. So I'm not necessarily staying on track here. I'm eh, not too bad. Wow. Not too bad at all, actually. And there are master artists in history that have used things like the uh, camera Lucida, the, you know, the Lucy type device, reflective projection through the ages. Artists are definitely people, especially a working artist, definitely people who look for any tool that will help them get more quickly 
to their finished product. I think I am hitting, I am, I was hitting low. That's actually the, the line that I was stopping at is actually on the siding of the house. Look at that. I think that one's right. So, and, you know, know that my, my ability to stay on track here is not as good while I'm talking and working on this. There we go. But getting that, oh, wow, that's a whole lot easier to put in a picket fence. You don't, you use a different sharpener, but you love it. Yeah. Um, I have a whole bunch of different sharpeners. This one just happened to be the one I found first. I have one that is a, um, kind of like a little, uh, sealed cup. Um, that's actually shaped like this and this little cap part here actually spins around and it has a little spot right here that you put a little paper thingy in that you can dab your the tip of your pencil off on and it's a technical pen or technical pencil um, pencil sharpener that looks like that that's another kind of pencil sharpener for these and I have one of those floating around here somewhere. That's the one you use. Yeah. Yeah. And that's one that I have. I just, I just don't uh, have it out right now because it wasn't the one I found first. All right. You'll find that putting in that little fence actually helps you put in the rest of the house. So I'm just going to, I know this is taking a little bit of time. So that's going to be short. That's going to be shorter. That'll be the next one up. That'll be tall. That'll be the same next one up. Then the short. I'm not putting that little sign signpost thing. The This little signpost thingy. It's not the mailbox because it's too short this way to be a mailbox. So already done that one. There we are. Being able to see the tip of your pencil through the picture or the, the projection really helps. And like I said, if you're interested in the app and you haven't already downloaded it, I do have affiliate links. They are at the top of the chat. And they are down in the, um, now when I say top of the chat, I did not pin them at the top, but they are in the chat room towards, towards the top. It would take me a, just about a minute to go ahead and drop them again, but they are in the more information below the video and they are affiliate links. So if I, if you happen to make purchase of the app, from my affiliate links, it helps me out, but not required. You know, if you've already got it, awesome. You love impressionist painting? Oh yeah. Impressionism is awesome. And truthfully, if you have, if you have a like if you have an accurate drawing of something or you can see it accurately, then it's easier to do the impressionism, the impressionism. I'm just working my way across. And now I'm not being super, super careful. I want to get the, 
the basic feel of it in though. That way. And now I can see the bottom of this fence, but it's pretty much a straight line, so I'm not too worried about making it making that because I can just pop right back through across and give a straight line. But making portraits of houses, like I said, people pay really good money for nice portraits of their homes. So if you want to get, you know, get a good likeness, because all a portrait is, is a likeness, right? And okay, I think I've hit the edge of my paper. I'm going to erase a few of those. I don't need to go that far. I was just, you know, working my way all the way across. There. So let's zoom back in. Got that window almost done. Forgot the bottom of that window and I forgot this side of the molding or frame. There. And let's go ahead and get, well, I already did that. I think I, I think what it was is I needed that a little bit straighter. Window on this side. So this is I this is yet another tool, another way to get artwork onto surf or get your artwork onto surfaces. So and what what I mean by your artwork is your interpretation of an image. is your artwork. So this is my interpret, whoops, my interpretation of, I need to rotate that. That's my problem. That's my problem. This is my interpretation of this house, this image. I will not draw it exactly. I will not trace it exactly the way you will. You know, your tracing is going to be different. Your drawing will be different. And you're going to go in and make choices of what lines to draw that will be different than my choices. Let's see. I think I'm going to go ahead and bring a few little lines across so that I remember I want some leaves. And these don't have to be thick lines. These are going to be thin lines, giving space for, for leaves to go in. I think that's good. That branch is coming across. There's going to be more leaves. All right. So we've got the basic house in here, but I do need a few of these little details, like what's the spacing of the, the siding like? I don't have to draw every single line, but I can go in and put a few lines. Like that. And if they're not perfect, they're not perfect. And it doesn't have to be. I can make decisions on if there's like gutters or things like that on the house. Do I want that plant? I think I want that plant. So I'm just going to put some lines in to make me remember that there's a plant there. Oh yeah, 
I do need that bottom line, don't I? Whoops, I'm really going crazy on that one. There we go. There's some little bits of grass and stuff like that here and there too. Get a few of these little lines inside underneath of the porch, maybe coming up to those porch columns. Maybe a few on this side. And see, you'll find that your hand will, you'll, you'll need to twist your paper however you need to twist your paper. And you don't have to draw every single line. Because I'm certainly not going to. And if they are a little bit wonky, that's just part of the charm of a hand-drawn house. Now this is shingles. I'm going to kind of follow the lines of the shingles a little bit. And then every once in a while, I'm going to put a little up and down line. Gives a little bit of texture. I'm not worried about making it perfect. Little shingles on that that bit of roof there. Now we're going to need to get an idea of some shingles up here on the main roof. Again, it's very close lines. Shingles are much, much tighter than you think they are. So get some of these lines and then every once in a while a little texture line a little up and down line. It gives the impression of it. This is where being impressionistic is good. Putting your little leaves in, very impressionistic. You don't have to put every leaf. I am going to give a little bit of some shingles up here on the on the house, even where I'm going to put leaves, because this is in pencil, I can go in and erase if I don't want a line. But it makes it feel like the, the house is really in place, that the tree is really in front of it. There's that line underneath. Ah, see, and this doesn't have a lot of, a lot of decoration in there, does it? Because this is autumn. There's like a path in front of there, like a sidewalk. This side of the line, I'm going to make it kind of floofy with with grass went off the I was just continuing on without looking <laughs> because you know what that's one of those things you can do get those little grassy lines in there's some grassy lines on that side there's a like a porch step going across here I think the doorknob is like right about there. I made the doorknob really big and I'm going to say that they've got a mailbox slot in the door. I'm making that up. This is glass. Put a few little few little highlight lines on the glass. I'm not worrying about drawing the curtains on the inside. Leave that for your I'm leaving that for my whoever is drawing this. Or whoever's coloring it. Because I'm going to make this into... Ooh, I missed a line. 
right up here in the tree. I missed a line. See? Oh, that makes a difference. And then that joins up to that one. Cool. And then that one kind of goes off into... Off like that. All right. <laughs> so, let's see. Have we got all of the basic bits? We do. I think I am going to... I'm. I'm going to kind of make something up here, I think. I'm going to say that there's a bit of a, like a bushy plant. If there is a bushy plant there, but I'm going to shape it a little bit differently. And then there's like a tree back here. I'm just going to make a fake tree. See? And then on the other side, even though there was like a little garden shed or a fence or something, I'm actually going to say there's, well, actually there is something there. Let's see. See, I have shifted a little bit. My phone has shifted some. So I'm not sure how, you know, how that happened. Let me, let me go to move. See if I can move my picture. Ah. There. That's back in line. I don't know why it went offline. But that's, you know, I'm looking at it and going, okay, there's probably a little garden shed back there, but I'm not going to draw the garden shed. So I'm just going to say that there's like a little plant that's coming down. You'll be seeing it through the through the fence. And a little tree that's up here and the I will just you know make the fence come farther because now that I've seen how to draw the fence right I can draw more so there we go we have oh no I need one more I need one more kind of fluffy tree or something right here. And now I'm just making up a little tree and not worried about if it's a perfect tree. It's basically going to be something that people can color, but eh, I don't like the inside. Maybe it'll be a like a, a giant cedar or arbovitae or something like that. Just a few little shapey. There we go. All right. So there we go. We have a cute little house. I just have to do some pencil lines for the... Oh, I didn't do the little, the little decorations inside those... That side there. See? too bad actually it's it's really cute and it's you know my first pass the first pass on any tracing is going to be a little bit more rough but this would make a really cute coloring page just I'll just ink it and I think I'm going to leave it without any leaves on the tree that way people can put their own leaves on the tree I think that works really well I hope that you guys enjoyed this fun little adventure doing Da Vinci Eye, making a house portrait. If you like this, make sure and click that like button. And uh, hey, subscribe to the channel. I'm doing all kinds of artwork. And next month is going to be a full month of cottage, little houses, coloring, painting, and maybe doing some little interior bits, maybe some pictures of flowers and I said picture of flowers pictures of pictures of flowers how about that <laughs> and I really appreciate you being here thank you so much make sure that you go out and do something creative take care of yourself so you can take care of those around you and oh I'll show you this is a picture 
of one of my Procreate cottages that I've done. This was actually from a, um, a hand drawing like this. And then I took it into Procreate and did all of my lining work in Procreate. So that was a lot of fun. And uh, yeah, if you're in interested, hang out, check out the channel. I'm doing fun things. Yesterday I did, now I'm, I'm at the closing guys. I'm, you know, whatever. I went and did some more um, water, loose florals after the video yesterday. So I did this with the dandelions. I really like that. I did some lupins, fun colors. I did some blue daisies. So loose florals, if you're interested in loose watercolor florals, I just did these yesterday. These are the ones I did during the video. So I did these poppies and these just forget-me-nots and some lilacs. And then what started it all off was this birthday card I made for my husband <laughs> with his ink tents. These were all done with ink tents and they're on uh, cotton po postcards. So I was able to, I was able, I'll be able to just throw those into the mail and just address them and send them off. Anyway, thank you guys. Take care and I'll see you soon.